so how many people um, are sort of working their way towards an answer or maybe getting somewhere with this question? Okay. Um, so again, I, I suggest you start with a picture here so that you can figure out uh, a little bit more about this. So it says... One train travels towards Denver, which is the origin. That's convenient. So let's just uh, say here's Denver. And, and it's west. So the train is moving in this direction um, at a speed of 120 miles per hour. Sorry? West is, the other way. West is let me see. Never. Yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> There, okay. You think I would know that living on the west coast is the other way, but anyways, um, so it's going to be going, um, traveling towards Denver, so the train is somewhere like here, moving that way 120 miles per hour. Um, another train travels north away from Denver. North I do know. Um, that's this way, so it's going to be uh, 90 miles per hour. And it says, the first train is 20 miles east of Denver. So that'll be 20 miles of distance. So um, we're going to need to be able to talk about this train. So since this is kind of like uh, we're using an origin here, it's kind of like we have a graph, uh, we might as well call this distance x, like the horizontal distance. So um, we'll call this distance here x. And this represents the change in x with respect to time. And it says the other train is 10 miles north of Denver. Okay, so if they're up here, this would be 10 miles. And they are, um, we might as well use y since we're going vertically. So this is dy dt here. Okay, so I think all the information I have is on the picture now. So calculate the distance between the trains. So this is the distance between the two trains. Uh, nope, that's terrible. Let me try it again. Um, this is the distance between the two trains. So um, I can call it capital D for distance. So the first question again is what am I looking for? Um, in this case, it's the change in distance. So what is the change in distance with respect to time? Okay, the second question I have to ask myself is how do I connect all these things together? How do I relate these pieces? So, um, to answer that, um, there is a way to connect all three pieces, and that is to say um, that uh, x squared plus y squared is capital D squared. Okay? So, in order to figure out how fast that distance is growing, um, we're going to need to do some implicit differentiation. So that'll be 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2 times the distance dd dt. So let's just take an inventory here and see if is this going to work for us? Do we have the information we need? So can I figure out the distance x? Yes, it's been told to me. It says it's 20 miles. Do I know the speed that train is moving? Yes, I do. So, so far I'm okay. Do I know how far the other train is away? Why? Yes, I do. Do I know the change in speed for that train? I also do. Can I calculate the distance between the trains at that instant? Yes, I can. So, I have enough information to solve this problem, but I need to rearrange this for dd of dt. Okay, so why don't uh, we do that over here? I'm going to have to divide everybody by 2d. So if I divide everybody by 2d, these would be gone. And I'll get um, x plus, uh, let's do it this way, x dx dt plus y dy dt. Um, and we'll divide the whole thing by the distance of the train is the change in distance with respect to time. Okay. So, um, I need to substitute those values in now. Um, I have to calculate this one right here. Don't know that distance right now, but we can use Pythagoras to do it. So, d will be the square root 
of 20 squared plus 10 squared. So that'll be the square root of 500. So to calculate the change in the distance, um, this is going to be, let's see here, um, 20 miles for x. The speed is, uh, what's, how fast is that train? 120 miles per hour. We could, then our units will be in miles per minute. We can, yes, but it uh, just means our, so we could go either way, but just be careful your units that you're using. Let's so, sorry? Yeah, I think they gave that um, because in part two, then it'll be easy to do the math. But yeah, either way, it's going to work. It just means, it's just a unitary conversion, right? It's like if someone tells you you're going 60 miles an hour, you're going 100 kilometers an hour, you know, either way, you're talking about the same thing. They're just a different set of units. So um, anyways, uh, I'll stick with the, uh, uh, you know, actually, maybe just to keep the numbers smaller, I'll use miles per minute. Um, so it's two and one and a half. So there'll be uh, two miles per minute there plus 10 miles. And this is going um, 1.5. Now tell me uh, what's wrong with this. Yeah, that's what's wrong with this. This distance here, dx dt, it's moving in this direction. So that distance right now is shrinking. Okay. So that x piece is getting smaller, which means this should be a negative here. Um, so if I calculate all this out, um, negative 40 um, plus 15 over root 500, that'll tell me in miles per minute how fast that uh, train is going. So I'll just get my calculator. Okay, so at that particular minute or instant, I get uh, negative 1.12 uh, uh, miles per minute. Okay, and um, it should be negative because if you picture what's happening to the distance here, at that particular instant, it's actually going to be getting a bit smaller because you know it's, it's coming closer together. So it's that distance is actually shrinking at that moment. Once they get um, to a, there'll be a point here where the distance starts to grow, but I believe at that time, anyways, the distance is going to be shrinking. So um, now figure out at 10 seconds what's uh, going to be happening with that train. Oh, sorry, 10 minutes, yes, 10 minutes. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to clean up a little bit of my work, but uh, most of it we're going to keep. Uh, we don't want to refer to the same related rate there since we're calculating a new one. But uh, this time, it says that our time is 10 seconds. So um, 10 seconds into it, this train here, sorry, 10 minutes, thank you. Um, this train here will have traveled um, 20 miles during that time, which means it will now be right there in Denver. So the position for x will be 0. This train is still traveling away from Denver, um, but it is traveling at 1.5 miles per minute. So that means it will be 15 miles farther. So it's now somewhere up here, which is a total of 25 miles. So I can put all these information back into the problem. Um, x is 0, going 2 miles per minute. And um, y is 25 times, now what did we say this was? Uh, one and a half, right? And the distance now has changed. Um, the distance, you, don't, you could use Pythagoras uh, to do it. But, I mean, a little common sense is going to make, make you uh, realize, right now, this is where the train is. is uh, one is here, the other one is there, and we already know that's 25 meters, right? So, um, a little common sense will get us that the distance is 25. So, this will be 25 times 1.5 over 25, which is just one and a half miles per minute. Now, um, if we try and do like an inventory, does this make sense? Um, could you predict this, or why does this make sense? That it's going one and a half miles per hour. Miles per minute, sorry. 
Can anybody explain why that is? Sure, take a stab at it. Yeah, so this train is at zero right now. So it's not contributing right now. The distance is basically the one train that's moving north. And how fast is the train moving north? One and a half miles per minute. The same as the distance is changing at that instant. So it, it does actually, um, you know, it's, some of these problems are pretty abstract. They're hard to work with. But um, this, these numbers should make sense. If you are standing there and this train is moving away from you at 90 miles per hour, well, guess how fast the distance is increasing? 90 miles per hour or one and a half miles per minute. Okay, so um, it's, anyway, sometimes it's harder to grasp all the algebra of what you're doing, but that should make sense as far as how fast it's moving. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to have you guys work on this for a few minutes on your own. A searchlight rotates three revolutions per minute. Um, the beam hits a wall 10 miles away and produces a dot of light that moves horizontally. How fast is the dot moving when the angle between them is pi over 6 or 30 degrees? Um, this is basically like, um, anybody been or seen, had a lighthouse? Like, you know, you've been out in the dark and you've seen the lighthouse spinning, right, at the ocean somewhere. And it's like, it looks like it's moving really slow and then it goes right past you and then it looks really slow and it whips past you quite quickly. Um, this, is, this is basically what you could think of it as. It's like there's a, a lighthouse that's rotating instead of, just a, well, I guess a searchlight's similar, but anyways, it's rotating. Um, one thing we'll tell you, three revolutions per minute, we're going to have to work in compatible units. So what do you think here? Three revolutions per minute, what, sorry? Frequency. It's kind of like a frequency, but I'm saying, what units have you been given so far? Look in that problem. Um, well, there's miles is one set of units. Pi. Yeah, pi. So tell me more about pi. Where do you use pi? Per minute. Radians. So in three revolutions per minute, to help you get going on this, you're going to have to work in radians per minute. So three revolutions per minute, that's six pi radians per minute. Okay. okay, so keep working if you're working with a group and it's becoming productive. If it's not productive... <laughs> then uh, you can watch and follow me. Um, so here's my wall. And let's see, uh, say here's my searchlight. And what's happening is it's um, asking about the angle pi over 6. So say that's pi over 6 in my uh, searchlight. And I can label this, the searchlight's rotating. And I know that it's going um, at 6 pi radians per minute. And I want to be as calculus specific as possible. When we're talking about radians, we're talking about angles. So it's probably a good choice that I call this angle here theta. And I say d theta dt is 6 pi radians per minute. Okay. Um, now... It says um, it's 10 miles away, so I know this distance to that wall there is 10 miles. <coughs> and it wants to know how fast is the dot moving. So the, the, from the perspective of the wall, the dot is moving like, if you think about that, when you look at the wall, it's actually moving like this, right? It, it'll, at some point, the light will hit here and it runs along the wall in this direction, right, as it rotates past. So from the point of view of the wall, it sees the dot go straight across, right? So you don't have your circle in this picture. It's flat like that. This arrow I've drawn is the motion or the, the, the change that I'm looking for, the speed of that light. So I need to label this. It's vertical. It would make sense to call it maybe Y. And question? Okay, how can you then, if the wall is not a circle, then how can that be 10 miles away? Um, that's where the lamp is, directly across to the wall is 10 miles away. Then, the, if, the, the, if the lamp is then, if the lamp is in the circle, then that means the hypotenuse would be 10 miles and not the middle one, not the base. Uh, the light is not 10, okay. 
the the building is 10 miles away, the light can be more than that. Yeah, but it says it hits 10 miles away. That means the hypotenuse hits first. So that means the hypotenuse must be 10 miles. No, it says... It, it hits a wall 10 miles, miles away. Yeah, it can hit the wall 10 miles away. If it doesn't want to, it don't need to. But then that means the base is not 10 miles. It's the first point that it hits. That means the hypotenuse... Okay, let's... We'll, that just that a second here. Skinny wall. How about that? Okay. So, 10 miles away, um, and what I'm looking for here is this change, so I'm calling it dy, dt. So I have to figure out how to relate these pieces. Now, at the heart of this problem, there's a triangle in there, which is 10 miles, the angle theta, and y. So how can we relate these pieces together? Any ideas? Yeah, tangent will work nicely. The tangent of theta is equal to y over 10. So 10 tan theta oops, um, equals to y. So if I take the derivatives, 10 secant squared theta d theta dt equals dy dt. So if I want to know at that instant how fast the beam of light is passing the wall, then I have pi over 6 for my angle. And I'm moving at um, 6 pi radians per minute. So we can put a, uh, get a number out of this. Let's see here. <coughs> High over six. So thirties cosine squared reciprocal okay. <coughs> times ten times six times pi. So I get about um, one hundred and eighty eight point five. Taking notes on that to check it over. Sorry. Uh, what's the question? Six. It says six pi, not eighty pi. No, no. I mean the answer. One eighty-eight point five. Yes. Is that not what the calculator had? Okay. Hang on. Let me double check. Okay, apparently I haven't, uh, uh, maybe my calculator was in the wrong mode, but apparently this is not correct. Uh, what is it, 250, 251? Okay. Now, um, 251.1. Sorry? Do we ever have to worry about uh, it'll say how many significant figures if it's important. Okay, so the last one that we'll do together here. Um, this one is, again, something you should be at the point where you can draw your picture, figure out what you're looking for, and relate them together. So see if you can take this one away right from start to finish. Okay, so uh, I certainly won't have as nice a rocket as most of you did. <laughs> Too big! Squid! Draw eyeballs! Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's too big. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be better, right? Okay, anyways. So, here's the, uh, there's an observer. Well, it's perspective. It's because the rocket's 10 miles up, or, or 10 kilometers away, right? Okay. So, 10 kilometers away from the rocket's launch pad. 
and it says at a certain moment the angle between the telescope or sorry between the telescope and the ground is pi over three so let's just say this is where the rocket is and that's pi over th three Between the telescope and the ground. Yeah, that's right. Really, there's like things that are going to go down. No, it's going up. Like so, like the telescope is pointed at this angle. So between the telescope and the ground is that way. Oh, you're getting that. Okay. Uh, anyways, I, I'm assuming because otherwise I think this would be a, a weird problem. But <laughs> okay, um, it says. Uh, we want to know the speed of the rocket. So we want to know about the distance here. So we can call it y again, since it's rising. Um, that's fixed at 10 kilometers. But this angle is going to be changing. So theta is going to be changing. So we need to figure out a way to relate these all together. Any bright ideas? Tangent. Yeah, tangent again. So tangent of theta is equal to y over 10. So 10 tan theta equals y. So we get 10 secant squared theta d theta dt equals dy dt. And this time it's at pi over 3. So 10 secant squared pi over 3. And it says it's moving at half a radian per minute. So someone with a working calculator, can you please find out what that uh, speed is? Pardon me? That's how fast the angle is changing. So like that means that if we go um, one minute later, it will be half radian again. So about 50 degrees. Up. So can somebody put that in the calculator and tell me what... Uh, you have for the speed of the rocket rising? Sorry? About 20? Exactly 20. Okay, that works nicely. 